So welcome to the ongoing Performance Art Daily series sponsored by Toronto Free Gallery as part of uh, a, a contribution to this year's 7A11 the International Festival of Performance Art. Um, we've been having a great time basically going with a very informal kind of approach of, uh, of, of encouraging conversation among the artists as opposed to have them do formal talks, that kind of thing. So. Uh, I assume that will continue in its own flavor today, each one inflected by the host. Uh, today's host is Jess Dobkin, one of the 7A11D collective members. If we want to give her a round of applause. <laughs> um, uh, I just want to mention that this series is sponsored by the Canada Council Special Assistance for Performance Art Program and uh, remind you that um, after yesterday's dark day, which actually became truly dark because or, or the one thing we had scheduled was Karen Spencer, who actually got a bit of food poisoning yesterday and wasn't able to perform. However, I understand she's back today at Union Station, at 9 to 5 every day until Saturday. And tonight here at Toronto Free Gallery, uh, we have the Tuva Collective at 8 o'clock. So hopefully we'll see you back here tonight. And tomorrow, we start moving to other locations. Tomorrow night we're at the Gladstone Hotel for the Granny Boots uh, D2D uh, documentation uh, show, presentation of videos. We get a day off from performance, although there will be actions going on. I think Michael Fernandez is doing actions in the street and there may be some other things going on as well. Um, just check the website to get times and locations. and. Uh, and then after that, for the remainder of the week, we'll be at X Space for, me, for the evening performances. But of course, the performance art dailies continue here every day. Okay, that's all the housekeeping business. Now I'd like to turn over the day to Jess to introduce our visiting artist today. Thank you so much, Paul. And um, yeah, and I just also want to say thanks out to uh, Heather and Paul and Toronto Free Gallery for making this possible. I am so, <laughs> I don't know if I really need this, but maybe if I hold it this way, it just feels like the whole idea of it being so intimate and then I'm like this, but um, uh, yeah, you know, because the thing is too, when I do hold a microphone, then I, I can't seem to help but put it right into my mouth <laughs> for whatever reason. Okay, so anyway, um, I am so excited <laughs> to be here today because um, it's been my personal fantasy to host like a talk show. And then this morning, I kind of realized that I think I was accidentally conflating the idea of a talk show and like a game show and a dating, a speed dating game and like uh, tarot readings. And it was getting kind of all muddled in my mind about, you know, and then I got here and then I was only like, oh, no, I saw you two in the back. And I was like, oh, no, it's actually like the stripper circus <laughs> edition of the, of the performance art daily. And um, why? And, well, I, I just walked in on something back there. I was like, oh, okay, so, um, so what else are we doing today? So I'm just really excited uh, to introduce these three incredible um, international performers that we are so lucky to have here in Toronto, uh, starting with uh, Stane Henningsen, uh, Chuya Chia, and Carlos Monroy. And I thought that we'd start first um, by doing a little sort of, I know I also was like, are we gonna, is this gonna end like in a spin the bottle kind of thing? But I thought we'd start with, it's like, everyone's like, Jess, no, it's like, you know, noon on Tuesday, okay. So, <laughs> but I thought that we'd start off with a little sort of icebreaker. It would be like a free association exercise for the artists. Um, so I've given each of them like a piece of paper and a marker. And what I thought we'd start doing is just, I have like seven words that I thought it would be fun to do a little a free association exercise with them, where um, I'll say a word, and each of the artists will just write down the first word that comes to mind, and then I'll have them share them seven. with us. Right. There are going to be seven of them. See, and Carlos is numbering his paper. So one at a time. Um, I'll also just add that... Um, <laughs> that because of the nature of free association, it can be in English or in your language of origin, like whatever the first, because the beauty of it's the first word that comes to mind. Okay, so we'll start with the word ice. <laughs> <laughs> Getting to know you. Okay. The second word is oil.
The third word is sex. Can we play along at home? Yes, please do. <laughs> Keep your minds turned on, everybody. The fourth word is culture. Word number five, and don't think too hard, right? Because it's free association. It's association, okay. Um, the next are one, two, three, four, five. Did we do word number five? No, yeah. word number five. We're on number five. Thanks for numbering them for me, Carlos. The fifth word is Toronto. Second to last is Utopia. And our last word for the free association portion of today's program is performance art. Performance art. I'll also just take this moment to thank the three participating artists for being such good sports about all this. Okay. Um, and uh, if one of you wants to start, I thought that each of them would just kind of read out their list of words. Stain? Thanks. Um, first one, glacier. Uh, I even made a drawing of a glacier. <laughs> <laughs> the next one's Esso. Third one is good. Um, the fourth is people, the fifth is art, the sixth is performance art, mm. and uh, the third is, uh, or the last is action. So I may be a bit too much into the moment, but uh, yeah. Fantastic. Julia, do you know? Oh, my first answer is blue, yellow. Mm. Oh yeah, I Okay. Uh, first answer: blue, yellow, red, colorful, multicultural, paradise, and time. Carlos. Well, the first one is solid. The second one is message. Then the sex one. When you say sex, I just keep about thinking about sex. So it's sex. <laughs> <laughs> then uh, the cultural one is arepa. That it's uh, arepa is uh, let's say kind of a typical food of, of my country and also from Venezuela. It's something we share. Um, the five one I want to change it, but you can't. I know. <laughs> so it's I, I will put I will add something to it. So is business performing, mm -hmm. or performing business? I don't know how to. Mm -hmm. uh, number six, that's the top is flying, and the seven is a, a kind of a sentence. It's something right in between, in the middle of everything. Great. Okay, thanks. Um, and as far as just kind of the way I think that we structure this is like I, I kind of have a few questions for the artists and I thought that you all would probably have questions for them as well. Um, and, uh, and so I invite you all to kind of, you know, to chime in for sure. Um, but one thing that I wanted to ask each artist to talk about maybe a little bit um, when I was thinking about like the work of, that all three of you are doing is just a little bit about the cultural specificity of your work and about ideas around translation. Um, of translation, of culture, of language, of images, of concepts, um, that uh, when you, because all of you travel with your work and go to a number of different places, and I'm just kind of curious about what it means when you come to Toronto or when you bring your work to other places and kind of like how the work itself kind of translates in these different cities and at these different festivals and how it feels to be like a, a traveling performance artist with your work. And it, any of you can start if you kind of are just like, oh, I'm right there, i got something to say. Can and I also, I, well, and, and, I, I'll, and I'll add if you're going to go first too. I mean, it's interesting to me with Carlos's piece that he presented because um, the piece was actually developed in Canada. Yes. You know, it, it, he created a piece that was developed at Banff in Canada and then kind of was brought home exactly. and then was brought kind of back to Canada. So even talking about that might yeah, be. well, um, <clears throat> well, actually, for me, bringing CMG 
to Canada was like bringing it home. It, 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 it was more like that. Um, I actually believe somehow the Canad Canadian context. Um, what I lived in Banff was somehow what um, makes CMG born somehow. I mean, this was a, an, a, an idea I have a long time ago and I didn't have the opportunity to develop it really. And then I, <coughs> uh, the government of my country gave me this kind of scholarship or well, it's not a scholarship exactly, but it's like a residency. And they, they actually pay like everything for going to Banff and then coming back with the project. And it's be, it, it's been kind of really hard. Two things. The first thing is that the 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 first part of the project that it was like finding the five artists I want to be the core artists of the brand, and that kind of thing has been always been by mail, and that was I developed in Canada in Banff. Uh, there is also you just see one of the video pieces, but the project have three video pieces that I developed there with people there who is already inside the brand and they are already making money. And so I shoot some testimonials of uh, Canadian artists from Alberta and some other artists who I met in the BAM Center. Mm -hmm. They give me their testimonies of how their life have changed during CMG. And, and well, then I go back home and the first step I, I need to take for completing this whole thing it was remaking the pieces, uh, remaking the five core pieces for having some image, also for the video footage, and, and also just for having the experience of, of performing it, like really performing it. And then I bring it back here. So it's been like a translating process since the beginning. And also because some of the artists, like some of them don't speak in English, the, or the, for example, the Brazilian guy, he speaks in English, but we speak in Portuguese. So this has been all like all the time translating the whole thing into different kind of context. And bring it here to Toronto, like bring it back home, like the mm -hmm. somehow the finished product of it, finish, because I don't, I don't really believe it's start and finish, but kind of just uh, made the world premiere here has been great. Great. That's it. Thanks. Well, I normally never do works twice, so I try to, well, I'm using the eyes now, that um, when you go into a city, you always only demand for ask for an eye. The eye stock is different sizes. So, um, Are I'm we big here in Toronto? No, <laughs> you're pretty small here in Toronto. <laughs> <laughs> so I was thinking, this is going to go way too easy. Mm -hmm. And I had a line of a, a long, uh, well, using the eyes, going back and forth, and a lot of things, but having the eyes strapped on, it was just about reaching the knife <laughs> as fast as possible. And I didn't even think I would manage. But uh, when I when I travel doing performance, uh, well, it's not about uh, translation. I, I try to. Well, I won't say I succeed, but I try to to uh, to uh, speak uh, an international language, an image. Mm -hmm. I've been a photographer, so I'd l also like to use try to create uh, try to create a nice images so people will have those images with them. Mm -hmm. That's what I hope can happen or will happen, but you never know. Maybe I succeed sometimes with that and, and if I do that's good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well um, when I I normally would start um, thinking about like what is disturb me the most at the moment when I am presenting the idea, uh, the proposal or um, whatever. So the uh, same thing, I, the idea of presenting a performance art piece, I try to be always make a new work all the time. So I always had this space of thinking um, concerning about the current issue, uh, especially anything that is dealing with the environmental issue that really disturbed me at the time. So, um, um, and besides, I would also check on the city that I'm going to present this mm -hmm. work. What is the possibility and what is the relation? Mm -hmm. uh, it may not be a direct uh, relation with this, but I, I guess the, the issue um, is worldwide issue. That's why I, I said how it disturbed me the most, uh, those ideas that I felt disturbed by. 
Yeah. Yep. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And for those, um, Tuya's performance is going to be coming up at X Space this weekend. She hasn't performed her piece here at the festival yet. Um, okay, well, I, I feel like we might just kind of segue into what I'm thinking as kind of the existential quest, like I, I kind of created an existential question for each of you. <laughs> and, I, and then I'm thinking it would be good to have some kind of music or something at this point in the talk show, which I, I don't have, but imagine, and I won't make Paul sing, but I found out last night that he's really good at it. Um, <laughs> Um, I'm learning a lot of things about a lot of people this week. Um, but but Chuya, I, uh, my question for you, I think, was um, it's just kind of a, a question of like, what is faith? Like, what does faith mean to you? I was kind of thinking about that in terms of your performance work. Okay. May I ask you back the question, mm -hmm. why you have this faith in your in impression of asking me that this question? question? Yeah, faith. Um, well, because, um, I mean, I haven't seen your, I've, I just have read of your work and I haven't seen it yet, but I think in some of the, you know, talking about um, just like really hard issues around the en environment and ecology and stuff and just kind of the, the intensity of the images that you deal with, I kind of was just wondering like where, um, where faith sits for you, like in, like, like in your relationship to the performance and in terms of the issues that you're addressing like in, in the work? Well, I think I won't be able to answer the question of fate, directly to fate, but I might associate to righteous instead of fate. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because, uh, um, well, yes, uh, it have to go back to where I come from. I grew up like a fishing village, mm -hmm. very much by the environment. And, um, and learning through all the process, living from, moving from country village and to city and having all the conscious of the teaching from my family, very strict traditional teaching, like, oh, you, have, you cannot waste this, you cannot do that, you can't do this. So it became like part of my living practice and it became the root of me mm -hmm. also. So that is, I, I don't know, it's just like, when you see other people do this and that, and it kind of disturbed me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, um, yes, I think. So, um, and um, most of the time, um, I would think or respond directly on something, maybe without developing or thinking too much, have a very quick uh, impulsive response on something that I thought that is the right way to do and I am still learning uh, doing this actually mm -hmm. of how to do things that I think is right to do and, and, and at this certain moment uh, there are many issues and you go, that I go through and I learn how to take it from one to another and at certain stage of life I felt that yes, I, I probably have to pay more attention on this point and to learn it because when you pay attention, you pay your concern, you also kind of like start learning at that point. Yeah. In life and performance and kind of not making a distinction between the two? Would you yeah. like the life and its performance for me is the same. Mm -hmm. I'm still dealing with art and it's part of my life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I, so I'm taking it, whatever issue, whatever thing I concern and taking it from that certain point is, is, um, it's very important for me mm -hmm. that I'm mean serious, I'm concerned, and I'm learning to learn more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, well, I guess I'll ask the other, um, the, for the existential portion of the program today. Um, <laughs> let's see. Um, Stain, my question for you is, uh, what is cold? What is cold? Cold is pain. But it is. I grew up up north in Norway, mm -hmm. and I've been freezing my whole childhood. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I wanted to know. <laughs> and it has been, yeah, and that's pain. Mm -hmm. That makes you sick. That makes, I mean, yeah. And how that's do you cope? I, well, I don't. Yeah. 
I come here. I go to the south. Great. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, um, have you ever been in Latin America? <laughs> I mean, you ever been in, in South America or Latin America? I haven't. Oh. I look forward to coming. Uh, I invite you. Mm-hmm. Good. <laughs> um, no, well, um, yeah, of course it helps. Mm-hmm. I mean, that it gets a ha- uh, habit mm-hmm. and, um, and you dress. Mm-hmm. So, um, actually, it's when you're out, when you, when you move to Norway or southern part of Norway, it's colder. Mm-hmm. Because you don't dress, mm-hmm. you think it's warm, but uh, that's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, no, but but uh, like now I'm also working as a tour guide up in Pittsburgh, yeah. so that's what I'm doing. I'm taking tourists every day, summertime, to glaciers, showing them glaciers and things like that, and uh, yeah, serving them whiskey on the ice taken directly from the glacier. So I'm working with ice every day, the whole summer. And also when I come here, but I think I think the the ice is as as a, as a material is beautiful, mm-hmm. and it can uh, tr- well it goes into water and damp, and it's one of the four elements, and it's you can see through it, and uh, like give so many levels, so it's it's a beautiful material to work with. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and, yeah. and also, I mean, we talked we talked about lots about the global warming and things like that, and uh, but nobody talks about pollution anymore, mm-hmm. and. Everything comes up in the, in the middle of the world, or where it's warm, like in South America, mm-hmm. and it goes up and it comes down at the poles. Mm-hmm. So um, that's the, the cycles of, of, of the pollution and all the, the bad stuff. Mm-hmm. So my well, ice is good. Ice is beautiful. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's, 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 it's pain. Mm-hmm. And not having any other skills, but pain, pain, pain that's, uh, that's what it's good. <laughs> And were you having a collective fantasy of going to Norway and going on his tour? That's like, are you all with me on that? Yeah. Okay. Okay. And Carlos, um, my question for you is, um, oh, and he's also the festival stripper. It's on his tag. Yes. Um, but the question that I have for you is, um, what is funny? What's funny? What's funny? Mm-hmm. Well, funny is something that makes you laugh. That's to funny. You. Okay, what's funny to you? Oh, oh, I have to go deep in that answer. Yeah, please. <laughs> <laughs> Search your soul on this one, please. <laughs> what's funny? Mm-hmm. Well, I, I think that's depend on the context uh, of 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 where you you live and the context you are involved with. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's funny for you today? Like, what's funny today for me what's today? Funny. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Anything funny? I don't know. Today? Every day I have a what the fuck moment. Mm-hmm. You know, like something happened. What what the fuck? So like I, I don't. Yeah, every day something weird happened to me. I don't know why, and and that will be like my the funniest moment of the day. I don't know. Uh, it's yeah, that's a really philosophical question. No, for real. Like I will say the truth. I've been reading about humor and how mm-hmm. how humor is. I cannot say what's humor, but I, I can. That's hard. Gosh. Well, you're using it in your work in a real, you know, crafting. Well, I I I I don't mean to be funny, actually. <laughs> <laughs> no, My no, I'm, I'm, no, I'm no, I'm saying this. I'm, I'm saying this totally serious. I'm, mm-hmm. uh, I don't know. I, I've been talking with some of you guys after the performance pieces, and everyone is thinking I'm making a joke, but I'm not. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm really serious on, on on the thing that I'm that I I'm really convinced that CMG could work, mm-hmm. could work now, that it will work mm-hmm. actually. So. And maybe the humor is in that disconnect, you know? Yeah, no. Yeah. I I but I can say something. I maybe everyone think I'm funny, or not funny, but I just make fun of things. Because I really believe humor is a way to break the ice, right? To, I, I think uh, when people laugh, uh, it's a good way, at least a, a, a good starting point to have a relationship and uh, have a conversation and a dialogue. Uh, so that's why, th- that's maybe why you ask me what's humor. Uh, but uh, I, I will say not, not necessarily I'm looking for humor. I'm also looking for other stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I thought I'd pass that. So this is the audience participation portion of our program. <laughs>
and uh, maybe there's some festival volunteers who will uh, just pass out. There's nothing on the paper, it's just blank. Here, Johnson. Um, yeah, well, and it's just if you want to, uh, this is just um, voluntary, but if you want to write down a question for one of our three artists that uh, maybe, you know, you would or you wouldn't ask out loud. <laughs> no, but, um, but I just thought this might be an opportunity to, uh, to write down a question and then we'll collect the questions and then maybe we'll answer some of the questions. Um, no, but it can, you know, just if, if you kind of want to write down, it just would be a different way than, than people kind of, you know, passing around the microphone. I got something the to for Shuya. Yeah, yeah, so yeah faith please. faith is what we give in scene. We performance our services. That's uh, okay. the only thing That's I want to say. You. That's paid commercial time, my friend. Um, <laughs> and, um, I, I know. Um, and while this is happening, is this a, is this a possible opportunity for... Because um, it seems like Carlos Monroy is... Oh yeah, I got a winner. Who is, where is my winner? She's not here? Well, no, I, I believe we, we should really wait for her because it's a she, performance personal experience. We can. She, are we, is she guaranteed to... Yeah, I asked, I asked her okay. if she's going to be... I mean, I asked her yesterday, I asked my winner if she would really be here and she said yes. Okay. And, well, if not... Anyway, it could happen at any time. I mean, I'm looking out at a her. sea of winners here. So <laughs> if um if if no, not, but I, that I winner mean it, will find herself. But she was the winner. Okay. okay. You know, I know, I know, we are all winners, and we like being between winners. I know that, but but she was the winner, winner actually. <laughs> okay. So I cannot. Yeah. So so <laughs> so uh, you know, if if somebody, I want everyone to feel in the loop on this. Uh, basically, Carlos, um, as part of his performance the other day. He um, has he had offered a well somebody actually won a five second performance by Carlos that was going that is going to happen today as part of this um, session. However, the winner, uh, the young woman, I can do, I can do, has not yet arrived. Yes. And when she does, she will receive her five second performance. Exactly. Okay, so just let me know when she's here. Um, if does anyone have any questions, we can collect them. Just uh, kind of. Pass them forward. What's that? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, they're all anonymous. Okay. I have a question. From who? Yeah. <laughs> Alrighty. Um, so, I had one other question for you guys. It's kind of, um, yeah, and, but maybe, uh, maybe I'll ask my question while the other questions are coming in. And then also I totally want to invite us all just to kind of get into a, conver uh, a conversation if there are things that you, know, that, that you all kind of uh, have been thinking about that came out of things that, that you've already said or if you guys want to do more talking with each other. Um, I guess my, yeah, one of my last questions is, um, and I guess it's actually the question from my daughter who couldn't be with us because she's at, kindergarten right now, um, that she, when she was at, uh, attending the performances and she kept saying to me, you know, why is she doing that? You know, why is he doing that? Why is he doing that? You know, each, at each performance, what's he doing now? Why is he doing that? And I was like, those are really good questions. <laughs> um, and, um, and so I guess it kind of made me kind of think about if, and this is kind of a very general question, but about why, why you make performance. If I can just ask each of you, and it doesn't have to be, I mean, and you know what, and I think part of the thing about, the, that I wanted to do about this format today for, um, you know, Tuesday, October 26, 2010 at the Toronto Free Gallery, is that, because um, sometimes I feel like with these sorts of sessions, it's as if, like, whatever you say right now is kind of like, you know, you're kind of on the spot, and like, this is what I think, this is what my work means, and I kind of wanted to get away from everyone kind of Lay making, it down. what? Lay it down. <laughs> I was about to cuss, but I don't need to do that. But like, but just to, to not feel like um, you all are pressured to kind of make artist statements about this is what I think and this is what my work is about and this is what I do and you know because obviously like I mean like Chuya even for you of not having done this performance yet like you know to even speak to something that's in the future that we can't even know yet. But um, but kind of really then landing us for right here right now about. You know, and you can like then we can all be like at a bar tonight. And you're gonna be like, oh my god, that is so not what I meant, or like to say, or like it turns out that was a total crock of shit, or you know, or that's how I felt this morning, and now like my stars have aligned differently, and I'm feeling something else, and you know, so I think 
there's, if we kind of have that understanding, then, then, then we can kind of proceed and just, um, and uh, maybe uh, we're not holding anyone to anything, but, but just some thoughts about, you know, for right now, one reason. Let, let's not say the reason that you make performance, but what's one reason and what, what's one thing that you get from making performances? And then we're going to get to the anonymous questions. Yeah. Can I start? Please. Um, well, when I was invited to, to, or when I'm invited to festivals, I really don't want to go. Mm -hmm. I really <laughs> don't want to go. Unless it's warm. No, but I mean, it's, it's, it's creating the work. It's, mm -hmm. it's all the pressure you feel on yourself, and you want to be good, and you want to do this. And when you come there, it's, it's beautiful. And the performance family, and I really like doing performances. I enjoy it. And I enjoy being in a performance, being present, being in front of the audience, sometimes playing with the audience. It's a, good, it's a beautiful feeling. Mm -hmm. So I think I'm going to continue doing this all my life. This is beautiful. It is. Uh, I started doing performance when I was putting up an installation, mm -hmm. um, a big installation traveling Europe, and uh, I thought it needed a performance. Mm -hmm. So um, there, there I went doing performances, and then you, so when I was invited to perform at festivals, and um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a good thing. It's a, it's a big and nice part of my life. That's why I'm doing it. Thanks for sharing. That's good. Julia? Well, I have a very family-based performance art community in Singapore that actually make me start making performance art and really enjoy it. I have pre-knowledge about performance art and, and basically those are like second-hand or even third-hand opinion or very subjective opinion from, from all the reading I have until like in Singapore, the, like, um, the artist village had initiated all these performance art events and of course, we won't have like bringing a lot of perf uh, international performance artists in Singapore. And I always there all the time and even traveling like to Asia Topia and, and to hang out together with the performance artists and all this, that this community and, and watching their performance make me feel like, um, yeah, like what mm -hmm. Sting say is beautiful. You, I feel so much closer, I feel inclusive in this family and I always participating in any of the performance arts when there's somebody doing some action I always come stop myself to be part of it mm -hmm. and to one day leave and say hey Julia why don't you do something mm -hmm. at the moment I said okay let me do it and I think that I'm ready and I want to do it and I had been doing it so that's when I start and and just in love, mm -hmm. <laughs> and never stop. <laughs> mm -hmm. And now, and, and Tria is now based in Sweden. Do you still feel that sense of connection with the community in Singapore? Yes, yeah. I am. Um, we connected so much on Facebook, so I always yeah. reading of their <laughs> argument, their confrontation, and everything. I still felt yes, very much in touch with mm -hmm. them. Yes. Well, Carlos, you're on. <clears throat> well, like something you say that, uh, oh, my winner! <laughs> oh. I like winner in the house. Okay. I, I like something you said about doing this all your life. We can help you with that. And I also like about this thing you say about the networking and being part of a family. Like that's that's the whole point of CNG. We can help you also with that. I will have to answer the question you just asked in two ways. The first one, I will say it like personally and then the CMG answer. No, okay. first the CMG answer. Um, why I'm doing this? Because I really believe it can work. Mm -hmm. uh, I really believe we have such a strong power. Uh, and the thing is that we are not together on this. I mean like we just met like in these kind of festivals and we do whatever each one do, but we are not, I mean, we are a big family, but we, we don't think bigger than that. So that's why CMG was created. And then why I do performance art, I mean other kind of performance art. It was kind of part of a coincidence, I will say. Um, 
when I started university, I did, I asked my family for do a sh photo shooting because I entered in, in a. Sorry, wait, you, what? In a, I, I entered in a living room of a friend, and they have these wonderful pictures of a family, of their family, when they were so happy and united, and right. So I just just asked my parents to do the same thing. So we just make this kind of family portrait, and after uh, uh, we we make a first thing, and after that uh, I was so upset. I, I didn't like the product because somehow it the photo didn't reflect what my family is, the first photo I take. So then I asked them to get naked for the photo. And we all get naked in 36 photos, like step by step. And at the, fun, the final photo is my family sitting in the same pose, just naked. And I also shoot a video. And then I showed this kind of product in, in, the, in a class and well, whatever. And and then suddenly something say, you, you, this is like a performance art piece. So I was like, well, man, nice, what's performance art? <laughs> no, I, I really know what was performance art, but I wasn't into it. And after that, it's just like a big snowball who is growing and growing <laughs> and growing. And I, I just can't, I just can't handle it anymore. So, you know, like, and, um, and I want to say also for the festivals, these things are great. Like you met so great people here that have wonderful ideas, wonderful ideas, and uh, <clears throat> and yeah, well, just going to other places. Actually, every time I go out of home, it's a business opportunity. So I love it. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, kind of funny. I was kind of giggling because my other existential question. I was trying to decide which of the existential questions for you. My other one was like, you know, like what is naked what is getting naked but i decide to go with what is funny instead but uh, but thanks for getting on that too um okay sting can we borrow one of your shoes would that be all right can we, can we use one can i take it off of you would that be okay okay thanks okay. thanks okay i was about to it's like an impulse it's hard to okay <laughs> Do we have all the questions? Yeah, okay. Okay, <laughs> I'm sorry. It's just like, okay, I just need to know what I'm working with. Okay, I think my bow is giving me a rash. <laughs> I'm having like a personal moment in public. Okay, um, so maybe um, one of the artists wants to just draw one of the questions and yeah, and, and then and, and we'll just kind of see what they are. <laughs> But what if it's not for me? Actually? Then you'll have to ask, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it says, in your opinion, is performance are political? Oh, it's an anonymous question, right? Yeah, you should answer that question. What did you say? In your opinion, is performance art political? Yes. Yeah, I, I, I will not say performance art. I will say life is political. Everything is political. Even laugh is political. It's just have a way you um, address. Like everything you do, even take a shoe out and put some question in it. And uh, everything, it, it has something political in it. So how? How it comes that performance art, even not, not even not being political, is even not being political, political exactly. It, it, I mean, we can't do an, anything to avoid it. We are all part of the system, and we know that. So, you start with that question. Oh, okay. Put it under your pillow tonight. <laughs> Should I read this question? It's not for me. Yes, please. Uh, is to Carlos. Oh, wow. <laughs> Why the try to integrate art and, and business? Why try to merge two disciplines? What, what, what? Why the try to integrate art and business? Why try to merge the two Disciplined. disciplines? Well, I believe they are merged already, right? There is an art market outside here, and 
I mean, this is the free gallery. Yeah, that's nice. But not all the galleries are free. That's first thing. So I'm I'm not doing nothing new at all. And um, and I say it's such a great potential. Like we look, look just us three, right? And what we do and. Somehow outside there is a bunch of people who have no idea what performance art is and how powerful it is. So how no no one knows outside what's the power of what we are doing here and what are our political statements. And I, I really believe it, it is somehow important to to make that know to people, but at the same time we eat and we have to pay bills and we have to do all that people regular people do. We are also regular people. So in that way, I'm not proposing nothing different. I'm just giving a new option. Then you can work. work. But I'm working because, you know, oh, there is Normal another. Work. No, but there is another thing I say. Uh, I was going to say, and I forgot when you asked me why I do performance. It's mm -hmm. just because I don't know what, I don't, I, I don't have, I, I don't know how to do anything else. <laughs> Chuya? Uh, I'm going to have you um, take another question, yeah. too. Thanks. Oh, it's not for me. <laughs> 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 okay, it's for Spain. Please tell us about drifting off on an ice block down in the Greenland. Please, please, please tell us about drifting off on an iceberg down from Greenland. Yeah, that, this is one of my ideas I have. Oh, this is. This is <laughs> I've been I've been thinking of this for five years. How can you actually get some towboats up and attach a big iceberg, and then you go up on top of that iceberg, and you drag it all the way down to to Europe, and um, you're actually living on top of the iceberg and doing performance, living in society, coming down to Europe, and the iceberg is melting, and. Uh, getting together with all other performance artists, creating a society and having a good, having a good time. And look, <laughs> that's a beautiful image as well. <laughs> Let's invite Leonardo DiCaprio. He's a performer artist. Yeah, and that, that, that's it. That I was, yeah, I probably mentioned it. So that's um, one of my things that I'm start working on. Mm -hmm. Please. So it's um, gonna <laughs> please it's gonna take some time and <laughs> some money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well okay um I just drew from the shoe because I've got a question for Chia well somebody in our audience in our studio audience. Um, how does fashion influence your work? Well fashion well well it's, yes, it's definitely, how? definitely. It depending on how you dress, you re, how you represent yourself, uh, what color you're putting on yourself, uh, which is why you can see like most performance artists are always either in white or black because they don't want to make any like, uh, it's a very neutral uh, position to present the work to be seen. And uh, of course, if like I'm, I would like to actually yes. When I became a when I start doing performance art, I am also more aware of what I'm wearing, dressing, mm. and I am more also paying attention of how people dressing themselves, and um, and flashing back of from the culture I came from like before I moved to Singapore. I, I was from Malaysia. And uh, I see people doing performance in the daily life without knowing what they are doing. They don't really pay attention of what they are, their behavior, their action, and what they're putting on them. Especially, we have a lot of free t-shirts, like people giving to you, and you don't know you're actually advertising for somebody else. You didn't even understanding those statements that you are putting on your body, and it means something. Of course, um, when you are in the art context, you see like artists always write the bring statement on their their body. It, it it means something, yes, cool, or they believe in something else. But for most ordinary people, 
from where, like mostly in Malaysia, like small village or smaller town, most people don't pay attention or, or know what they are uh, bringing this segment. So yes, uh, so I try to be uh, neutral, of course, more and more neutral in putting out my, my suit, uh, my fashion in performance art and trying to also, uh, if it's related to the content that I am talking about, then of course I would dress accordingly to, to get as close as possible to the, the issue or, or the content of, or the relation to the, the action that I'm going to do. Sorry. Mm -hmm. yeah. I got a question. Yes. Then, too. Um, so you were, like, I'm wearing right now black and white because I'm a performance artist. Uh, no, no, I'm for real. There are three, for me, there are three kinds of uniform for performance artists. One is white, what is, that is performance uniform number one. <laughs> there is the performance uniform number two, that is, it's, it's, black, the other one is white, and then the performance uniform number three is being naked. <laughs> and I usually use them. Um, I usually use them. I have used them all three, but uh, I gotta, so you, you normally use white and dress, no, or you not, just... Not really. Like, uh, for instance, my piece in the 2007 when I did in uh, Indonesia, mm -hmm. I was dressing uh, just with the sarum, um, is a, a is actually the sarong was originally from Malaysia. Sarong is a traditional clothing uh, or, or fa fabric that majority of people using it. You are using it for sleeping. You using it for bathing. You are using it for anything. Um, so when I was in Indonesia, it's very similar context, and the the work that I was presenting is so much related to the the the, the cultural background itself. So I was putting myself in a green salon, sarong, mm -hmm. they call it sarong. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I, and suddenly we, I, people t look at me like I turned out to be a, like a green goddess because of I was wearing sarong. So, and that's contributed to another performance that I developed when I, eat, um, when I did another performance in 2009 in uh, Yodaboy. I did another piece using the same sarong again. Where was that? Uh, in Sweden. Okay. Uh, in 2009, I used the same sarong. I, I try, like I say, that I try not to repeat, but and also not to repeat using the same material. But it is uh, if the material is really important and mm -hmm. and the concern, I can use the same material, no problem. But in a different context. So yes, I was wearing sarong, and uh, another performance I did is about a corporation like black and white suits. Like the, but uh, I, so then my question. Yeah. Because uh, I, I want to know if you wear it or not, and if you wear it or not, I don't know. I, I think you're not. Socks, but I mean. yes, but uh, then the, this is a general question, and actually, if anyone wants to if answer you, this. If you don't look naked, uh, right now. <laughs> <laughs> he already started, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, but the question is if we really believe being wearing black and being wearing white or that makes a difference and it's really unchurched things of of I don't know what what why we try to take out color. No, not take out color but take out it's somehow of a political statement just wearing white or black. Okay. I mean I'm gonna, why we do that. Okay, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna put this out to the audience then and um, and if and no pressure at all. If the person who asked the question wants to say something about their interest in the question, or if somebody else just wants to kind of speak, speak to this and speak to what um, Stain is wearing. <laughs> Personally, like I just came back from uh, the UK where I was for 10 days. I ate nothing but bread and cheese, and now this is the only thing that I can wear because it's my. <laughs> Truly, I had a whole other outfit in mind, but I, nothing. I can't wear anything else. Okay, so um, that's personal. Yeah. Some level, that's also a very kind of civilized notion. You might say that green 
is much more neutral as a backstop in terms of the world mm -hmm. or you know, et cetera. So we could put any color in there as a neutral color. Really. Yeah, but I think it's I think it's important when you do when you do a piece a performance, you uh, you think uh, of the whole and you dress like what is proper for your performance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I mean you have to look at as one image, whole image, hundred percent complete image. So then you have to dress accordingly. Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. that's how I think. So I could be naked, white, blue, or any color. But but dressing with a lot of colors, well, that will normally take the attention off what you are doing. Mm -hmm. And black and white doesn't, in a way. I mean, I think that if wearing black or white or being naked or in a suit, they're they're sort of just so basic. Everybody can agree, like, okay, white clothes, black clothes, a suit, or naked. That way it makes what your action is less about you personally. Yeah, but sometimes it can be you personal as well. Yeah. Well, uh, I was doing a performance out in, in, in south of France, pulling a chain, six, 600 kilos or something like that, through the streets. And then I wanted to be a normal guy. Then I had jeans and t-shirt. And that looked good. So, I mean... It's all about what yeah, you're doing, I think. But the, is that church that we are talking about, that you just say like there are some kind of uh, paradigms or things that everyone can agree at it, um, but somehow it's like, you, you just say that right, it's somehow a problem of identity and who is doing the performance, right? Well, th this is what I felt, so why I should take out the personality of the performance? Because it's actually all the performance I'm sorry for being so egocentric, but I'm sure everyone here is really egocentric. So, what's the point in taking out? I mean, I'm in black and white now, but what's the point in taking out with a white and black suit the personality of the performance? I, I, I mean, if this is a question I'm not going to answer. It's just something that is, it's keep bumping in my mind somehow. But well, but I, I, I just believe I agree with you. I, I believe it's a thing of, of personality, really. And we have an sorry, Paul, yeah, but we've got I, another voice here. I think for me myself, I think that this what Jurgen said the other day, the other day we had this talk that uh, when people are talking about performance, they are to hundred percent talking about themselves. And I think for me yeah. it's um, it's very much that you it's not the service at all. When you see a puppet master working with his uh, dogs, they are always dressed in black because they are getting in into the dog, so you just see the puppet. And I think that's that's what I prefer. I think it's it's not the, I mean, in the same line that you were saying, that the image is important. It's what you create for image, and I maybe don't want, I want to be a, a little part of him. So, so I, I think that we're talking too much about the story. Yeah. I mean, yeah. That's mm. Paul? Well, I was just thinking, because it, it, I know it's been an issue for me in the past, that, oh shit, what am I going to wear in this stupid performance? <laughs> <laughs> because, People read costume as part of the performance. It's just a tradition that's beyond, uh, you know, what performance art itself is. Even you know, it's it's an older idea of performance that people what you wear is going to say something, just like anything else. And often, I would arrive and I wouldn't know what I'm going to do, and then I'm doing this action and suddenly realizing, oh shit! Of course, I got to be dressed in something. I didn't bring a costume, you know. And uh, so a couple of years ago, I was in Mexico and I bought a black suit and a white suit because I thought and and Tanya was there, we were sharing a room, and she was like, oh yeah, well, that's black suit, that's just one of the things the guys need, just like the girls need their black dress, right? That it's like a standard thing, and it's sort of like, then I don't have to worry about what I'm supposed to wear for this performance, right? Because it's kind of a, it's an established tradition, and the meanings are kind of, have kind of been so, uh, 
not universalized, but kind of homogenized in a way that people will read it as neutral even though it's not neutral in the sense of, of you know, mm -hmm. sort of like, okay, that takes the issue of what you're wearing out of, why was he wearing black? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. whereas if you wear something else, they go, oh, why was he wearing that red shirt and those, you know, hot pants or whatever? I mean, they're just gonna. Mm -hmm. So it's an attempt to, if you haven't thought that through, to kind of like uh, take out that element. I don't know that necessarily it's a successful strategy, but it is. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. We'll take maybe one more comment on this, and then we're gonna um, go back to the shoe. Agnes, did you? Yeah, I'm just saying that you you explain it yourself kind of, but you uh, the black suit uh, has a tradition mm -hmm. and you're reading it as neutral, but actually you're not reading it as neutral. You're placing it in a very specific tradition of male colonies and black suits. So it's a sort of uh, and if you if you work in that sort of realm, you want to identify with that. You've got it. That's an easy, never, that's never, an easy never, way out, never, black suit. <laughs> I still enjoy preparing for what I'm going to dress for the performance. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Chia, do you want to... Oh. oh, yeah, sorry, Stan hasn't pulled from the shoe, from his own shoe, <laughs> and you should. Maybe this is a question for me. Can you describe the political color of performance art in your context? Can you describe the political color of performance art in your context? <laughs> Next, please. <laughs> Black and white. <laughs> yeah, we did talk about this. We already answered that. We might have answered yeah. that. And uh, maybe it's one of those moments if the author of that question wants to be like, oh my god, but they are totally not getting what I meant. Like, speak up. I got a maybe you can. Mm -hmm. Or the audience would like to, hey, say something about this. Maybe, and before you see the performance, I don't know. <laughs> but but it, it does, I, I, I think about that. Because every time when I start a performance, I will always have eye contact with the audience. I think it's very important to find the connection, like what Helga said the other day uh, also. Um, and that is how I also start in my performance, always start a communication or uh, eye contact with the audience to find and the confidence and, and confirmation or, or, or information from the audience and carry on my action or try to bring the audience in connecting to the work. So I always have some, a little interaction with audience. But of course, I try not to repeat it or do this too much because then it will fall into a formality in my performance. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So, so, and when you start getting um, find, getting this contact with the audience, what kind of contact, you know? So this is what I'm. Great. Yeah. Question. Thanks. Me. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Um, we might. Yeah. Well, I was gonna say I want to open up to the audience a little bit, and and also to invite like you know we'll we'll go back to the shoe a little bit, but we're you know I'm just keeping an eye on the time as well and the paninis and like um. And, and, uh, and like if your question hasn't been asked yet and you're like, oh my gosh, are they going to ask all the questions in the shoe? Like, and you feel like just kind of being like, hey, wait, I want to get this question addressed. Like, feel free. Did you want to say s what? Anonymously. Huh? Anonymously. Oh, yes. <laughs> or you can just kind of like be behind, you know, or whatever you are. You can borrow my boa <laughs> and we won't see. Okay, did you want to? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I want to sort of comment
large cultural activity. So just say, who cares? Who, why would anyone care to see you and about your kids everyday life? And we discussed, of course, that she just thought, um, why don't you expand to bigger issues, which is an interesting thing. So that is a question common. And I'd love for you to speak to that a little more as well. Like, um, how how did you respond, and what do you what do you think? Um, I thought um, for me, I'm like a, it won't be subjective because I'm very interested. So that I'm interested in actually uh, knowing about people's everyday lives and how they live and how they develop. I'm really interested in sometimes when I go to friends' places for the first time, it's like so interested in looking at their house and see how they live and how they place their things and what's in their fridge and all these kind of little things. But it does, doesn't mean that everyone has the same patience. No, I haven't. Yeah. Not at all. Yeah. These personal things doesn't matter that much to me in performance art. Mm -hmm. I like to think more thinking of bigger problems, problems that are, may, well, maybe people don't care, but I like to take up topics that are important for me also in a global world. Yeah. I think that it's not my responsibility, but I, I feel good by doing it. Not uh, pinpointing or anything, but uh, trying to do it not through direct. That's sometimes hard, but, um, but uh, also performing in the street. Performing in a gallery is okay, but if when you go out on the street, on festivals or by your own, and you do performance among the people, and uh, you hear the comments, and you see how they react, and that's interesting. That's really interesting. And uh, it's well, we've been to a festival in the south of France for some years, and uh, that festival is a small fisherman's village. So uh, the first year, every, everyone was lunatics, the crazy people coming into town. And some years after, oh, it's a festival again, and they come and they try to inter interpret it, and they they're part of it, and that. Yeah, then it makes sense, I think. In, yeah, then you can communicate to people, and people not going to galleries, people, people in their daily life. Then you can reach people in their daily life instead of talking about your daily life. I think that's more interesting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <coughs> this is going to be slow now, so... <laughs> Okay, we're gonna get back to you. No, 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 no. I can do it. I can do it. Wait, just I do really believe performance art have a trouble. Uh, performance art supposed to be more direct, right? That that somehow the sense of why performance art was created to be more directly connected, to be more shocking. And but I do believe performance art have a trouble of public. Uh, a, a public of of spectators. Um, He's I think high, so um. I think there is a lot of unaware people of what what performance art is and people who don't give up, <laughs> you know. So it's that's maybe why you should join CMG <laughs> because we can make it more people interested in this thing. I mean, it, we have a wonderful power. Uh, and all everyone, I believe everyone should know what we are doing inside this gallery. So that's, well, you should maybe see a bit or something. Yeah, yeah, okay, too, yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry, Paul. Uh, and the, the part where I was physical. thinking of giving you maybe an example of one of my work um, that uh, daily life does, you can gain a um, connection to the bigger public, yes. and. And it can be also concerned with a bigger issue. Doesn't be means that you are living in a daily life by yourself in a little shelter. Whatever you live in is 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 maybe individual. But if you are putting into a bigger picture, it's our whole growth. So, like say for environmental issue that I'm concerned about, and it's related to our food, our da uh, our daily food, what we need for our body, our health, what we breathe in. So this, I think this is like more like a, a bigger environment that we are inside this environment. And one of the performance I did um, was like I carry, I was constantly trying to put on a 40 kilo rice on my back. 
and, and it keep dropping down and putting it back again and dropping and putting it back until I managed to tie it up totally on my body and collecting back from the audience and until that I was totally collapsed and I couldn't be walking out. So looking at the whole process of putting this is not just a performing for me, it's also an experience of uh, how I grew up from a village and how the farmer actually had to do the, exactly the same thing. But I was using this as like uh, to, to say, uh, as associate to something else about greed about what thing you are picking up and how the heaviness of life. So it does connect to the public of their daily struggle and, and, and to their own context also. Yeah. Agnes. Hello. <laughs> oh, both. Okay. Um, I just want, because now you talked about personal <coughs> uh, life and stuff, um, and I think it's quite interesting with this distinction between life and art. And we talk quite a lot about that in, in performance art. And you've talked about that a little bit, like how does your background and experiences yes. inform your practice. But I would like to throw that also to Stein and Carlos. Can I do that? Please do. Thank you. Um, how did you get this <laughs> uh, how, how does your personal life um, and kind of or experiences and cultural background and stuff inform what you, you as a performance artist, your work? Oh, everything, actually, everything. Mm -hmm. That's, um, yeah, that's, that's basically it. That's, uh, that, yeah, it is, it is. That's, mm -hmm. that's, uh, that has created me, and that me, I'm creating my work. So it's, it's everything, I'm 100%. And uh, also, you say you are, your performance carrying this, uh, this 40 kilos uh, uh, back. Yeah, I've also done performance like that to show how, how hard life in general can be. But I mean, you can interpre interpret that how you like, but, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of inter interpretations in that work. So it could be, like she said, but it could be other things, depending on, on the guy or the person watching. It could be anything, depending on the person watching. I think that's good if you can, if you can have a different, well, I do a work, and I think one thing, and other people living their life, they get something totally different. Mm -hmm. That, I think, performance art is really interesting. Mm -hmm. And also to listening to those different opinions. But um, no, I am 100% what I am. That's easy. I mean, it's so easy. It's it. and, that, and, and, and yet so hard. That's, that's what's that. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's not great, but okay. Oh, it's profound. Yeah. Well, I was, well, well it's, it's good. It's profound. It's, it's, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> Carlos? I would say, well, life is where you take out material of Right, so I believe my not I will not say a dream, but uh, like I always want to be a stripper. That's one. Then my whole family. This my, is not a joke. My mom, my dad, my sister, and my brother-in-law, and also me. Sometimes when I want, we work in insurance salesmen. Um, and also, well, CMG is about art, and it's about what can I speak because it's about what I know. So I'm, I'm an artist, and I can talk about art and artists. So I believe, yeah, it's like real life is where you take out things from. So it, that's the same. That's the way my own life, my personal livings, penetrates my my pieces because it's. It's actually the same thing, mm -hmm. so how? Okay. Now we're going to um, pass stage. Can I say a comment? So Please. I think that there is no performance ever done. That's just a sad thing. So, so it can't just, you do that? Just put another speed on it, mm -hmm. uh, or, or do it in a different way. I mean, that's the best performance for me is when you take the reality and put it on. So, I mean, can you name one performance work that never don't have a Thanks. Um, we're going to play the, we're passing Stain Shoe now. So I thought, uh, here, you, you actually should have the experience of holding his shoe. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
I mean, yeah, yeah. I'm going to share that. Yeah. Is that if that's okay? I yeah. haven't asked. This is it's too late. Not <laughs> okay. Can we be you to later? Yeah. <laughs> For you, where does our thought and life begin? Okay, we kind of answered that. Yeah. Next question, please. I'm moving us along. It's interesting. But it's something that we all like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks, Paul. Um, do any of the artists work in any other media? And then there's other questions. If yes, does it benefit your performance art practice? And if no, would you want to? And which media would you choose? Okay. And you've kind of spoken to that a little bit. Already. I want. Yeah. I mean, you can say a little more, but yeah. I mean, as far as doing photography and installation and. Yeah, and how yeah, and how performance kind of came out of it. But, but yeah. I'm, a, I'm a photographer, and I also, well, sometimes do installations. And um, well, putting the performance art into that installation was important. It was important to, 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 to make it better, the, the, the whole work. But the idea was more or less taking, well, I traveled around Europe with a cemetery made out of crosses from what you find in, in, in Normandy, this, uh, Marble, cr white marble crosses after well, the Americans dying when they went to land, Second World War. So to make a sh long sh story short, I, I made that cemetery and traveled to all the cities in Europe, being part of the Iraq and war, to, sh to show that, that that's not soldiers dying, but, but civilian dying in, in, in cities, um, innocent people. You could die, you could die, you could be the, the victim. So, and setting up, I'd like to set, I wanted to put these crosses up, this installation up, and take photos to do an exhibition. But then it more or less turned into a performance tour. And um, I've never done that exhibition because performance took over in a way. So um, I'll, I'll maybe do it later. And Trudy, you come from like a painting practice? Yeah. 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 You want to I speak about that? as a painter. So, uh, yeah. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> yes, pain uh, body expression. Okay. Yes, yeah, so I think color does, um, mm -hmm. that's why while well, you're asking me the question about what you think about color, um, sometimes when I start a performance art you know, or having an idea, there are some color come in my mind of what I want this piece of work present in a certain color sense. It does. Anyway, like when I'm doing a piece about green, uh, things associating together are basically green, you know. But when I start designing the work and I start bringing in the, the different color and which what color speaking for those work, yeah. like red, white, red on white, gold on black, you know, the combination of color does show in actually in my work and selection of choices of uh, material. But I think I understood the question a bit better also. I didn't answer the question actually. <laughs> <laughs> no, you were talking about different, uh, well, as, as a photographer, I, I always use, try to make images. Mm -hmm. I look at the space, I look at the area, and where to place me, where to, how to do it, how to create a nice image. That's, I think, um, that, uh, that's one of the beauties in, in what I like to do normally. Of course, mm -hmm. I do other things, but yeah, if I succeed to creating a good image, um, well, then I'm really happy for that. Mm -hmm. And if the performance is good as well, well, well that, then it's great. Mm -hmm. And I have to say that all this, it may not come by your conscious. It might be the subconscious, where either way you choose things. Yeah. Well, do you still paint? Uh, yeah. Hello. <laughs> 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 <Kind of. laughs> He's not allowed. <laughs> I paint. I paint for fun. Yes, yes. Uh, not for selling. No, definitely. While, while while I was in Singapore, I was teaching painting, um, having my own classes, and um, I paint every day. Not for myself, for the student. But the painting you do now, does it inform your performance practice? Mm, I, I don't really paint for what I, my practice. I'm more focused on performance mm -hmm. art now. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, 
but I think my perform my painting itself is very performative itself. Mm -hmm. So that's what. Carlos, you, you are a little bit uh, hypnotized, uh, show you her from the stage, because if you don't remember that uh, she was on a uh, performance painting for in France this summer, she was painting every day in small villages. Okay. <laughs> yeah, as a performance. Yeah. Earning a lot of money, you can dream about this. No, don't I'm pretty listen. sure I can. Don't listen to him, it was him. Don't impose yeah. on me. <laughs> Ooh, I love this part. I, I think it's someone's going to win a membership just for free. <laughs> oh, yeah? <laughs> okay. I, the person uh, holding the shoe, I'm going to ask you to ask the question uh, that you're holding. Sure. Thank you. But I'm, I'm going to answer I, that. Sorry, I'm right? going to, you're going to hang on for just a second. Oh, okay. Get, yeah. Okay, another question. But, but uh, I want to on. answer we're gonna, the... We're just going to move on because I, I do want to get through the questions. And we, only, we only have a couple minutes left. I know, I'm a tough ass. I know. No. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. This is why I'm the moderator. I'm pulling up my bra strap. Scary thing. Scary? The scariest thing. One, two, three. Carlos, you start. The scariest thing. Sure. Okay. Now, wait. <laughs> um, or is this going to be the story of you I losing your nipple ring? I don't know if it's... Oh. <laughs> but, well... Uh, While once, swimming. Once uh, for a remaking of a piece who was done during the 90s, then I reperformed in the same festival in 2009. And for the piece, uh, well, actually, the piece is just take cocaine and write the names of the artists. Some artists, the first one was, like, in the first, when they made it, they put like just a boys and that kind of names. And then when I remade it, I put the names of the artists who did that piece and my name. So it was, uh, so I put the cocaine, I do the names and everything and you're supposed to pass it through the public for, it, for whoever who wants just take some of the cocaine. And well, the performances are pretty, I don't know, it was pretty bunch of people there and one of the other performers has this big uh, uh, truck, but a bunch of people from, do uh, you know these hooligans who sings? Mm -hmm. So during the performance, I start to give the cocaine to everyone, and then suddenly, like, the, the, the place where I have the, the cocaine, it was like, I, I don't know when, when it was, you know, and it was kind of a w really high confusion between everyone, and everyone was getting high with cocaine. It was like awful, or like, <laughs> <laughs> and and also like police coming or something like I believe that's the worst thing. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, while well, talking about scary, maybe I will use the word fear. The first time I f have been this fear uh, when I was in one of my performance, which I was live buried, and I I facing and str my body struggling and my mind was struggling under the earth and and trying to and. I'm wondering whether I should stop it or I should carry on. And but then my body was telling me no. My mind telling me that try it more, you know. So and eventually I say, okay, this is enough for me to experience the mm -hmm. feeling of being buried and face fear of death. That that might be an accident and the audience may not notice that you actually there and that's it. You know? So then I Dragging up. Yeah. I haven't been scared in performances, in not in mine. Um, I think I take calculated risks, and <laughs> life itself is more scary. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thank you for that, Lord. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it was making me think just in terms of the, the question of, of thinking about fear or about ri kind of framing it in terms of risk and in, in performance and different kinds of risk. Yeah. Um, so, um, okay, we, we just have a couple more minutes, I think, um, and then we're going to do some, um, you know, kind of casual mix and mingle time, you know, just leave a little bit of time at the end for, for that to happen, where we'll kind of stand up and move around and maybe eat and stuff like that. So, um, but before that, uh, but just I kind of want to open it up even a little bit more and again in terms of if, if there are other questions that haven't been addressed or something that had been addressed and you're like, wait a minute, and you kind of want to get back to it. Yeah. Oh! <laughs> uh, when was the last time you cut your hair? The 
last time I cut my hair? A uh, few months ago, I'm not cutting my hair, but I turn and curl up my hair. <laughs> that, was, that was like just in the summertime. I curl up my hair. Is that answering your question? Other questions? <laughs> A very yeah. short one that yeah. you briefly can touch. What do you think about this thing that I think is a very interesting time now with this uh, movement of reenactment that is really flooding all the... That's a stupid question. <laughs> uh, for me, it's not a stupid. For me, it's vital. <laughs> Sorry. I got a piece. Uh, actually, it was the piece Joanna Householder made me doing this piece. And actually, this is uh, also an invitation who any artist, it's not CMG, so. Also CMG is an invitation, but anyway. Uh, it's called the Perfer Box, and it's a performance jukebox. So people enter the place, take a turn. I call by the turns, and they have a menu. Right now it's about 200 performance from other artists who lend it to me the pieces. So person enter, take a ticket. Uh, say I like the 25, I present the 25, like I say who is the artist, why the artist give me the piece, when they let it to me and everything, and I perform it. And then another person comes, it's like a, just like a jukebox of selection, and I will do this during eight or, the last time I did it, it was during three days for eight hours, the three days, so it was about 58 performance reperform or reenact or so for me it's like classical and uh, like really vital and and I will say that it's kind of the reenactment the reperforming it's kind of it's kind of it's impossible actually it's totally a different thing so every time we do every time I move my hand even if it's the same place exactly and it's kind of it's different so it's kind of yeah, impossible for me to redo it. I don't think that you can do that, actually. I think, but I, what, is, what is important for me is that I think that uh, this is the thing that the art market now, I, I mean, this is how you can sell it. My friend, he sold a performance last uh, month to a museum for the first time in two in history. He bought a piece of her that she was doing in 94, and that she did now for three weeks. Uh, she was stupid enough not to write in that she has to do the same. That's <laughs> wrong. But it, it, it is. It, but it's just exactly that. That's the whole point of it. That is not the same thing. That it's another totally complete whole new piece. What and happens when I, I go with my painting to Muma in New York, and I show them, look, I've done a Picasso, I've done a Duchamp, I've done a, 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 a Duchamp. Will you exhibit them? What will they ask? Well, they, they, they are asking you for. Th that's like uh, the question of who, who is an artist, who can be an artist. And if you remember well, anyone can be an artist. Joseph Boy just says that, and it's one of the bases of CMG performance art services. So I'm coming with copies, in art world, there is, that's, that's the problem. If I'm coming and made a copy of Picasso, is the Picasso copy? But is, is, your, is, your, is your Picasso? So... Yeah, well, it kind of have, it have something from Picasso, but it's not Picasso, Picasso, because it have something from you. No, but in the, in the object mm -hmm. You are talking about original no. and copy, copyright. No. You are talking think about it, copyright. The artwork way of dealing with the fact that they can't market us, and so they create this, like, I don't know what the question is, they create the original. I had the same problem. I'm like, how come?
So I, I just want to say also, I think that um, I don't think performance artists are victims in that. I think that it's about an engagement between artists and these venues. And, uh, and because we are participants in this market, and in some ways, the values of our practice is kind of biting us in our asses at, in certain ways and in certain times. And that um, it's an ongoing, kind, to me, kind of struggle to understand like how uh, you know, these certain values and uh, as time changes and stuff and how we kind of do or don't engage. And then like all these kinds of, I mean, I think what you're bringing up is so important. It's like these kinds of quandaries that then like, I mean, that's so interesting of like, you know, of her kind of selling this performance that then other people can do and just those issues around, you know, presentation and ownership and authenticity and, and all of that. It's, yeah, Adam. I just wonder whether this is really one monolith That sounds to me like someone is copy our life or something. And I, I just, I just believe that reacting and reperforming is doesn't exist. Is is nothing to talk about it or about copyright. I mean, if we can go both right now and eat a sandwich, the same sandwich in the same gesture, and it will be totally different. There is no way to repeat anything. No, but I think. We are copy him. We should pay him. <laughs> but I mean, somebody buys a print of the Mona Lisa and puts it on their wall. It has a certain meaning to them. It's not the original. They know it's not the original. You know, it's it's not so different in a way. I mean, I what are you doing when you're doing performance? One of the things I've been doing is I'm creating a situation. So if I'm writing a description that allows somebody to have an experience. That's also creating a situation. Well, it'll be what it is in that moment. Like Carlos is saying, well, we have changed. It may have the same title. It may have, you know, but every expected experience that is going to be different, just like everybody's experience in any artwork is different. But my Mona Lisa is not your Mona Lisa. Yes, exactly. And we should start thinking in creating pieces for being reperforming, recreated. If, you, if, if, we, if we want to talk about it, because, well, everyone is based in the authority, in the authority figure of the artist, right? So I, I, as an artist, I have to be original, and I have to show you something that you've never seen. But somehow, that's impossible, because everything has been done, first of all. And second of all, it's, it, I'm, I mean, you are just seeing all my background. You are just seeing who I am, just because the way I act. So. It's somehow it's, it's impossible. The authority is pre like having an author authorship of something is always present. I think this will be a really big issue right now. Uh, have you, if you read the program that Glasgow is putting up next year about Marina, Marina Abramovic coming there and talking about the enactment. Well, it's, it's all Marina's fault. No, no, yes. No, no. Is now boss for the whole of MoMA. So it's, it's a per person that has been working for many years with only performance that is now the boss of one of the most influenced museums in the world. Mm -hmm. So I think that, yeah, we will have a spotlight to performance who I think has many answers for the, the, the uh, and questions that contemporary or object or has. So, yeah, I think that this is, this will really book for right that they. Start from selling performance work. I mean, I don't know how you have it. Has any of the 
from one of your uh, uh, senior officers? Oh. No. No. But my residue, if I went to know, the National Gallery exhibited the Jurassic Tony and the Mars. Yeah, and okay. That kind of thing. Uh, but, you know. but I mean, they actually bought it, right? We're talking with, with my other well, performances, though. No. <laughs> and they're not actually buying the artist yet. <laughs> 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 There is a Colombian artist from the 60s who went to the National Museum and just gave himself as part of the of the collection. <laughs> well, of course, they don't receive him, but <laughs> it makes part of that. Yes, to the Tertulia. But it's, but that's like a, but yeah, well, but that's like a dead part of the artist. <laughs> I mean, okay. it's dead, actually. You, if you want to see that well, finger, you have to go to the Tertulia Museum and see it inside Vermont. So it's kind of a dead part of him, but it wasn't him. You never know it's there. No, <laughs> Piero Pinochet, I know who is him. And I know why he did it. Okay, we're, we're going to have to wrap up for now, but I want to thank everyone for coming today. I really want to thank the artists for sharing so much of yourselves. Um, and yeah, and we'll see you for the rest of the fest. Thank you. Yeah. And remember, remember, always remember, <laughs> CMG Performance Art Services make art work for you. Yeah.